Have you ever wondered how the Salvation Army came to be? Let's go back to London, England in 1865. Poverty and suffering were widespread issues across the city. William Booth, with his wife Catherine, committed to walking the streets of London and ministering to the broken, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the poor, the homeless, and the hungry. Under their leadership, a movement began to grow, as did their ministry, recognizing that physical, emotional, social, and spiritual restoration go hand in hand. In William Booth's book, Darkest England and the Way Out, he states, I must assert in the most unqualified way that it is primarily and mainly for the sake of saving the soul that I seek the salvation of the body. Today, the Salvation Army serves in more than 130 countries across the world, impacting over 25 million people each year in the United States. This looks different everywhere based on the needs of each community. We work to assess local needs by identifying the obstacles and challenges, then develop local programs designed to offer immediate relief, short-term care, and long-term growth. In addition to the well-known Red Kettle, thrift stores, and disaster services, the Salvation Army can be found serving people of all ages in all walks of life. We are motivated by our core values in all we do choosing to be brave as we help disaster survivors who are searching for a glimpse of hope, showing compassion through our unemployment services and prison ministries for those looking for a way out of their brokenness, passionately caring for our youth through summer camps, daycare centers, educational programs, and providing gifts at Christmas for families in need, being uplifting through our rehabilitation centers and programs for those struggling with alcohol or substance abuse, building trust within communities as we combat human trafficking, love the elderly, and overcome poverty by creating a pathway of hope. At the heart of it all is still the same motivation behind our founder, William Booth's original mission when he started the Salvation Army, to seek and save the lost. Weekly worship services, Sunday school, and Bible studies are held in Salvation Army Corps or churches everywhere, and members gather together in community to encourage each other and grow in the love of God. Salvation Army officers, soldiers, employees, volunteers, donors, and friends help to uphold our branding promise of doing the most good. The Salvation Army, an international movement, is an evangelical part of the universal Christian church. Its message is based on the Bible. Its ministry is motivated by the love of God. Its mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in His name without discrimination. For more information on the Salvation Army in the USA and to connect with your local Salvation Army, visit www.salvationarmyusa.org. Hey! Hey, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm good. Awesome. What are you doing? I'm currently reading my Bible. Oh, okay. What are you reading? I'm reading my favorite verse, which is Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Beautiful. Yes. So tell me your name. My name is Risa Robinson. Awesome. What are you doing this summer? This summer I am serving at the Noonan Community Service Center. Beautiful. What, okay, so tell me about your uh, these S's on your shoulder. These S's, I am saved to serve. Beautiful. All right, so Salvation Army, this yes. is what we're with, right? Yes. Okay, so tell me more. Tell me what you're doing on these steps. What are these steps from? These steps are our beautiful PAL building, our administration building here at the Evangelin Booth College. All righty. Who are you? Oh, me. Well, here, let's turn around the camera. Yes, let's do it. Hi, I'm Melissa Melching. I'm a cadet here at the Evangeline Booth College. And where are you serving this summer? I am serving at the McDonough Service Center and also the Jackson Service Center. What has been your favorite part of the summer so far? All right, so one of the big things I love to do is I love to talk with people. And so I got to uh, meet uh, some of our volunteers that we have at our service center and I got to pack food boxes to be sent out to the community. Awesome. And what is your favorite part of the Salvation Army? My favorite part of the Salvation Army is the fact that we are doing the most good for people who need it the most. Amen. We are the Salvation Army. 
doing the most good. And we are here to serve your community. Good morning, church. Wherever you are today, it is time to worship. This song says, shout, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, he is coming to save us. Amen. Let's sing this morning. Shout, Hosanna. Matthew 14, 22 through 33, New International Version. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside 
by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Good morning. I have some things that I'd like to share with you that the Lord has placed on my heart today. So let's begin. Have you ever been to the beach and watched kids and even adults toss a boogie board across the top of the water and then run and jump to ride on it? I've always been amazed at how easy it was for them to do it. I was never able to accomplish that. And it got me thinking, was I never able to accomplish it because I was scared or maybe that I had a doubt that I couldn't actually do it. In today's message that I have for you, we will be discussing the topics of courage and doubt. We will be looking at the story of Jesus walking on the water and Peter being courageous enough to ask if he could do it too. I would like to focus on verses 25 through 27 to start off. And it says, Shortly before dawn, Jesus went to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Here we see that Jesus goes out to them walking on the lake and the disciples became terrified when they see what they think is a ghost. You see, Jesus didn't wait for them to come back to shore. Jesus went and met them where they were on the water. And this brings me to the first point I have for you today. Jesus could come meet us wherever we are in life. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to the went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus said to them, "Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid." When we meet the disciples in this portion of scripture, they had just been instructed to go, get on the boat, and go to the other side of the lake. They were with the crowd after just witnessing Jesus do the miracle with the loaves and fishes feeding the 5,000, and were getting caught up in the enthusiasm, and Jesus knew that they needed to be removed from the area quickly. So... Jesus tells them to go. Jesus stays behind and he continues to dismiss the crowd. When the crowd was gone, Jesus goes up to the mountainside to pray. And when he's done praying, he needs to get to where the disciples are on the water. So he goes. When we see Jesus walking on the water toward the boat, it was so that the disciples could witness and know that Jesus was the true Son of God. The disciples on the boat were struggling in the storm that was occurring, but at this point, they were not afraid. Not like they were in chapter 8 of Matthew, verses 23 through 27. And it says, Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. 
The disciples went and woke him, crying, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And he replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. In this portion of scripture, the disciples were not about to die. Their lives were not in immediate danger. Boating at night is dangerous, but they weren't afraid. That is, until the Lord Almighty shows up. That is when they became scared out of their minds, convinced they were witnessing a ghost taking an evening stroll across the lake. It is at this point that Jesus calls out to them, tells them to have courage and not be afraid. Jesus assures them that it is I. Jesus went and met them where they were. Jesus meets us wherever we are in life. Back in 2016, I came back to work full time for the Salvation Army. I remember being so nervous about being back because I had been gone for a little over two years. I had so many questions of why I had this urge to return. It was amid my doubts about myself and whether I could do the job that Jesus gave me, a, a gentle reminder in my spirit. This gentle reminder was Jesus standing before me, behind me, beside me, with his arms wrapped around me. You see, even though I felt I was far from being ready to fully commit to the Salvation Army again, he met me in my darkest moment. He didn't wait on me to pull myself up. He knelt and he grabbed my hand and pulled me up saying, okay, let's do this. In your times of fear and doubts, remember that you can always call on Jesus and he will meet you where you are. When you are feeling like the difficulties in life, such as bills, work, family, friends, are getting overwhelming and you just don't know where to go, he is always there to pull you up and lift you up out of where you are. This story in Matthew is a reminder that teaches us that God cares for us in our difficult times and about the importance of faith and courage when the going gets tough. Verse 31 tells us, Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? In this portion of scripture, we see Jesus reach out and save Peter as soon as Peter calls out to him. There was no hesitation on Jesus' part. It was an immediate reaction we can't really tell from this portion of scripture if this was a good thing or a bad thing that Peter did by telling the Lord to call him out on the water. The Gospels of Mark and John make no mention of Peter walking out on the water. So why has Matthew thought it was significant enough to tell about? Throughout Matthew's Gospel, Jesus has been teaching his disciples to follow him. So, is this another attempt at proof of that lesson? Peter doing what the Lord has done? Peter knew that he could not just hop out of the boat. He knew Jesus needed to command him to come. Peter believed the word of the Lord, and that is the only reason he got out of the boat. It was the things going on around Peter that distracted him. The wind and the waves caused Peter to begin to doubt. He was doing this great action that the Lord had commanded him to do. 
But once Peter took his eyes away from the Lord, he began to sink beneath the waves. He took the moment and he called out, Jesus, save me. And Jesus reached down and picked him up. Let us look at the word doubt for a moment. Doubt means to waver or hesitate. Why did Peter doubt? Or what did Peter doubt? Did Peter doubt the voice he heard or that Jesus may not save him? Maybe. One thing that is clear from this passage is that Peter didn't doubt the fact that he was walking out on the water. Peter knew the waves were choppy, yet he still stepped out of the boat. So why did he sink? I believe that the key to understanding Peter's doubt is contained within verse 31. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. The fact that Jesus was so close to Peter at that moment of his sinking is a telling moment as well. Peter was so close to Jesus, yet he started to doubt himself and doubt what the Lord had commanded him to do, all because the wind and the waves were taunting him. Why did he even get out of the boat then? The others were comfortable in the boat. No one else called out to the Lord to walk out on the water. Why? We all have a boat that we like to stand in. This boat can be anything from our job, our family life, school, our friend circle. It is whatever makes you comfortable. Sometimes our boats get crowded. Sometimes they get leaks. And sometimes they are, they are in perfect condition. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus for that split moment of doubt, he started to fall. I know we all have doubts. Doubts about whether you could pay your rent this month. Doubts about whether you have money to buy groceries for your family after your bills are paid. Some of you have doubts about your grades at school. When you are out in life, out in the water, so to speak, and you feel yourself starting to get behind and things start to pile up, all you need to know is that you could call out to Jesus to save you and he will immediately reach out his hand and lift you up. This could be as simple as Jesus sending someone your way to help you out. If you are in a financial bind, it could be getting a raise at work that will help in getting that little extra pay for, to pay for bills in time. Now that we know that Jesus will come to us in our moments of doubt, what do we need to do to have courage to live a fearless life? Verses 32 and 33 say, And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. In this portion of scripture, we see that as soon as Jesus gets into the boat, the winds stop and the waves calm down. We read that the disciples started worshiping him saying, truly you are the son of God. It took him saving their friend and returning him to the boat for them to really understand that he is the Old Testament prophecies had been speaking about. Recognizing Jesus as the son of God was a point the disciples needed. When Jesus stepped into the boat and the winds and the waves stopped, this was proof enough for them that Jesus was the Son of God. Marianne Rackmacher said, Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is the little voice at the end of the day that says, 
I'll try again tomorrow. True, sometimes courage doesn't roar. Sometimes courage is trying again when you don't feel you have it in you to keep going. Sometimes it is pressing forward when lack of visible progress dampens your resolve. Sometimes it's shaking off failure and pressing forward. Sometimes it's the quiet resolve that pushes through pain and weakness and failure and frustration. As the quote specifically says, try again tomorrow. Will you take that step out of your boat today and say that Jesus is truly the Son of God? I want to challenge you to cast your doubts to the side and be courageous enough to shout out, Lord, save me. Lift your head up high and be fearless worshipers he has created you to be. When Jesus first called Peter, he said, come, follow me. Jesus stayed true to his thinking. Peter had a lot of changes in his life and Jesus continued to say, follow me. That is all Jesus wants from us. He wants us to follow him no matter what. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to, to step off your boat, to deny yourself, and to take up Jesus? Will you live with one foot in the water? Are you distracted by the waves of emotional, relentless tossing of your world around you? Will you keep your eyes focused on him? As a result of this message today, my hope is you will call out to Jesus in your moments of doubt. This is a time to put away all those doubts you have and know that he will meet you in this moment. He is ready to receive you with open arms and lift you up out of the darkness. Are you wanting to have a relationship with Jesus? Reach out through a message or call your local Salvation Army who could put you in contact with us. We would love to talk to you and walk you through how to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Don't be afraid to reach out. Jesus loves you so much and he is saying to you, come follow me. So come.